Um, so. Have yours so we can keep track of those? Um, uh, my questions? Oh, did you have any further ones no. so we could try mm -hmm. to keep track of? Um, so I'm going to scroll way down here in patch. Um, and look at what the, uh, look at what the circuit numbers are. Right now, I think all of the relays are just patched as one big group. Um, yeah. Because those relays are how you'd be controlling the lights out in the front, right? Um, right off the power circuit. Those are powered all the time out there. So when you in, dim the, in, in, the, just a... in the lot, yeah, that is just data. Um, uh, I, if I remember correctly, um, they are powered from my panel, but they are set to on all the time, so, so that the Fresco controller or this controller can set them to off, but they remain powered. So the flash would literally be from here just turning on, off, on, off, yes. on, off. Not, just a, not a dim, up, dim, up, down. Well, it, or dim or whatever you wanted, but it's not physically changing their line voltage. Just it's a, just the DMX signal to that driver to control their output um, rather, than, uh, rather than physically switch them on and off. Um, but uh, all of those, there are, I believe, 88 relays in this space um, spread across all the torms, the catwalk. Yes, 88. Um, and so I have them all patched to one channel, channel 500, so that you can turn 500 on and 500 off rather than grab this huge range of channels. Because the console is limited to how many channels you can have patched at any one time. I don't think it's a realistic limit you will hit. Um, It is uh, um, uh, 2048. <laughs> um, not a realistic limit, but it's a lot easier to grab one channel and set it than it is to grab them individually um, because you won't hurt anything by setting them all on. You're using data to control their output, so it's really no big deal to have them all on. Um, but if you wanted to control a specific receptacle, you would come into the patch here, and um, each receptacle is whatever whatever sticker is on the receptacle. Say, you know, receptacle 24, it is address 24. So you could come in here and take universe one address 24, unpatch it from 500 patch it to, you know, 501 or something else and get disc discrete control of just that circuit. Um, in this particular space, I would steer away from anything that is controlled solely by its uh, electrical input. That will drastically complicate your life here compared to, you know, a fogger or something like that that has the DMX input where you can power it and then control its output with DMX. Um, particularly with this console, the way the basics of cue timing work out. Anything like particularly a fogger that has a warm up time and all that stuff, getting that set in the right cue and making sure that it's blocked so that it stays on through the subsequent cues and all of those things so that when you get to when you want it to work, it works. That can get really complicated compared to something that is just on. And then when you're ready for it in that cue, you fade its DMX level up and it just I runs. Think, I think the only ones that we're concerned with here is the two black lights. I didn't think had a DMX when we looked at them, and they would just be on. Or if, off. if yeah, if the, so if the, the black that was, that was, was yeah, if the, if the black lights are power only, you don't have much choice but to unpatch them from channel five hundred or from uh, channel five hundred here, patch them as discrete channels, and um, and move on your way. Um, the black lights, like what? Where are they? What? I think, and I don't think they were turned. I think they're actually hanging on the, on. I believe they were still hanging up on the on the. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. So maybe we'll. Well, you know, we're gonna go. If not, they would be. Everything else I think was put in that storage room on the side. But like literally black light. They're, like they're the, the fixture effect? black lights that you turn on and off. To, 
to create the black light effect. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll look really quick while you. I just wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to need to walk in there and pull those in, and at least give you a, a, a real brief uh, overview on our way to the black box of of what's where and and all of those things. Um, but here in our uh, here in our patch layout, we went over that five hundred is all of the power channels. Um, I didn't mention this earlier while I scroll up. There is a label key here on the uh, here on the keypad. You can label channels, subs, cues, all of those kinds of things. Um, so anywhere in the uh, um, I'm going to show you a couple examples here. Where here at channel 121 through 126, I have labeled those GDS blues for the uh, blue running lights that are around the stage. Those three are the work light circuits. Those were all manual labels. So you've got the keyboard over here. Um, and we can, uh, I'm like, uh, let's jump back out here to live and our uh, Q list. Um, I could type, you know, Q1 label. It brings up a soft keyboard, but we have a real keyboard. I'm just going to type test. And now in the label field over here on this Q, it says test. And, and you can label anything from subs to channels? To subs, channels, um, uh, cues, all those things. Can you label pages? Um, I don't know if you can. And if you can, I don't know where that name would be displayed. And the, the real trick with all of these is where does that label get displayed? Like uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, these uh, a bunch of these channels have labels. None of the labels are displayed here on the live view. You know, the queue list has a label but it's only in this column all the way out here. And you can turn some of these columns on and off and things like that, but that's the only place that label appears. Um, the most useful way for labels is the, uh, is the submaster, because it'll pop that label right up yeah. there with the fader. Um, but all of the other ones, you can label it, like in patch, you can label a channel just to keep yourself organized. I now remember what this channel is or why I patched it there or something like that. But then that information doesn't appear anywhere else. So um, it's pretty easy to forget about it and not do it because, you know, like, well, I'd really like there to be a little text at the bottom of that tombstone that says, you know, that's my aisle light or, or whatever. Um, and that doesn't happen. Uh, so the black lights are hanging. The problem with the blue lights, just to mention from earlier, mm -hmm. they're not on because you only have the front row on, and the front row doesn't have they're not plugged in. So the back row, I think they are plugged in. I don't know if that's I don't know why the black light the back row isn't on. The furthest oh that might that that might just be the preset that's running because I don't have them on from the console at the moment. Yeah. Um, so that's why we didn't see the blue differences because none of those blue ones are on. Okay. Um. But yeah, so uh, do you have any other questions about the console before we like head towards the black box, pull those electrics in, take a look at the system as we move that way? Um, You're going to be coming okay. back here to set up all that other stuff. Awesome. So yeah, um, I, I forget how many hours of training were part of the whole thing. I don't remember if it was 8 or 16 or 4 8-hour training. Oh, just four hours? Four okay. Hours. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, we might be coming up on the on the end of the, the four <laughs> hours that, that was promised. Um, but ACG has a great working relationship with the county. We don't just, like, say, oh, contract's up, and disappear. So, um, if you, especially with COVID and all that stuff, I know you missed the original training. You know, like, if you needed a little more time, I'd give you a little more time and not uh, just not tell anybody.
Um, and like I said, I think there is that other caveat in there about assisting in the operation on the lighting control sequence page. Yeah. So even if it's not in the contract, ACG usually provides it anyway, just because it's pretty complicated for you to use a space that was just handed to you with no information. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, uh, and you've been great every time I've called you, and I know you've responded to Bob right away. So they, they've actually had a very good response from here. Yeah. So um, we're we're not just gonna disappear <laughs> on you. Oh, um, if you uh, if you have more questions about the console, you know you can always ask us or or ETC. If you haven't dealt with ETC's tech support, they're phenomenal, um, and they deal with the consoles all day every day, and they have them in their tech support lab. You know, like while you're on the phone with them they'll ask you some, something like, what version of software is your console on? So that I can go walk over to my exact duplicate of that console, set it to that exact same software setting, and try and do what it is that you're trying to do or walk you through it or whatever. Um, so, and their tech support now has a callback feature, which is also awesome. Sometimes they have a 20 or 30 minute wait time, and now you can just be like, yeah, call me back. Yeah. And, uh, and all that stuff, which is, Awesome. Um, before we head, head down there, uh -huh. can I, we don't have to do it right now, but before we leave, can everybody just sign the sign in sheet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are we done with the questions and? Those are the things that, it's, it's if, we, we have, if we have more